Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of JY Dog F250 uh, Cummins conversion. Today we're going to fix that pesky oil leak. Just received a package from uh, Street Sport Industries. Uh, they sent me over a billet tappet cover to try out. And they are super busy. It looks like they've sold a lot um, on eBay. Also, they're an eBay vendor. Um, it looks like they stay busy over there. They've got probably one of the best prices on the internet for a tappet, uh, billet tappet cover. And uh, if you check on eBay, it looks, last time I looked, they sold about 166 of these or 100, uh, several hundred of these. I can't wait to take One of the things I was drawn to about this company is that they offer replacement gaskets right alongside their product. And that's a big plus. Right now, here's the hardware. That looks to be uh, stainless steel, maybe. Yeah, that's stainless steel fasteners. Pretty awesome. I'm pretty sure that's stainless steel. It says AR70, and from what I remember, that's like a stainless steel uh, fastener, I think. Anyway, um, these are the uh, vent gaskets. Right, I'm sorry. These are the vent um, adapters. It comes with two of them. Wow, it comes with a gasket and the O-rings installed. This is awesome right here. I thought the gasket would have a split in it and you'd have to um, use some RTV, but this is like a one-piece gasket in here. Nicely machined on the other side. That leak really took the wind out of my sails, so I really can't wait to get started on this, get the thing sealed up. I'm dreading pulling the pump off. It's not really because of the labor, it's because I don't want to mess up the timing on it. And uh, I mean, everything is set perfect on it. I love the way the thing runs. So there's always a first though, but so far I really like what I see here. This is a very nice, uh, nice product here. Let's if you can see how thick that is. Gasket fits in there perfect. I don't see any irregular I don't see any irregularities in the uh, the fit of the gasket. It's just I don't know if you can see that, but it's just like perfect. So it doesn't look like it would leak anywhere. And I like the O-rings. Everything seems like it fits very nice. And like I said, uh, they've got like the best, some of the best pricing I've seen on this for the quality. That's for sure. Can't wait to see how it fits. So let's get out there and uh, get started tearing things apart. Probably put a new power steering pump on this joker before I get to everything else. Cover. In some of my older videos, I made two timing marks. One is top dead center. I don't know if you can see that. I Hopefully you can make that out. And the other is uh, my timing mark when my pump is locked. <sighs> Hopefully that'll come out. But I put two marks on there and I'm going to line up the timing mark with my uh, crank sensor. And that should put me at 16 degrees uh, of timing. 16 and a half roughly, somewhere around there. 
Um, then I can take my uh, disassemble my pump and take the gear off it. So that's the process. If everything works out well, that's the thing I'm most concerned about. I don't know if you can make this out. I'll try to get the camera down there and see if I can. Camera can probably see better than me. But there's a timing mark right down there. I can't even see what I'm pointing at, but that uh, pickup right there for the crank sensor pickup, I've got a uh, timing mark marked on the front, so I line that up. And now I'm going to uh, pull the cover off the side of the uh, side of the pump, which is right there. Expect a little oil to come out. And there's the little uh, pen for lining everything up. Ooh, a lot of oil come out. Oh my goodness. Really? Gotta let it come out. That sucks. You turn it around the opposite direction. Man, I had no idea that much oil come out. Let me put a pan down there. One of the biggest things I read online is you do not want to drop that nut. You don't want to drop that nut and the washer behind it down here in the case or else you're going to be in a real mess then. So there's like a little divot right there and you can put something sharp, a nail or something like that and then uh, unscrew this and then pull it off so you don't stand a chance of it falling in there. All right, I just went in there and grabbed the first thing I could find with a point on it. So I can hold that in there. Have a little magnetic deal here. Okay. Whew, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to put the puller on there. They uh, sell them all over the internet for like 20 bucks. I, uh, you know, you can make one. But uh, I think I got mine for like 15 bucks or something. It's really cheap. So. Okay. Come to the conclusion that this puller I bought sucks. It doesn't give me enough pressure to pull. I'm going to have to put this piece of steel in between it so that um, it will have enough bite. There it goes. Yeah, that thing should have been a lot thicker on one side or something. Or shorter shorter bolts. Alright, uh, I figured since I was going in and uh, pulling that pump out, uh, now would be a good time to go ahead and replace the power steering pump. Uh, you know, if you've been watching my videos, I've had a problem with the steering a little bit. And I figured while I'm in there, I might as well do this. Plus, I like the idea of uh, two uh, return lines. Well, right now I've got one line teed into two. Um, I'm going to go, or two lines teed into one, I'm sorry. Two lines teed into one for return. And this way I'm going to have a separate return, one for the um, hydrostat brakes, and then one for the power steering. There's the maker. Oh, yeah, another thing. This is supposed to be a high, uh, high volume, high pressure pump. So, uh, what in the world? And you can see my hodgepodge trying to stick some silicone on it to keep it from leaking too bad. I got some cleaning up to do, as you can see. Finally got it out. See this design where how loose this is? I suppose what is supposed to happen is it's supposed to clamp down with enough pressure, but I torqued it to spec, and I probably should have went past that. But then you have to worry about warping the cover, which just doesn't look like it's warped at all. But I, I just torqued it to factory spec. As you can see, this even got little O-rings right here, and a nice gasket perimeter gasket here that sits in a little... Um, little trough there <clears throat> much better design
gonna do it in a uh, circular pattern starting from the center going out okay now we can torque specifications he says 18 to 30 pounds I'm going for 25 Still have to figure out what I'm going to do about a uh, breather. Get those two hose connections. Like a catch can or something I need on there. Right. And you can see there's a little bit difference in the covers or the reservoirs. I have no idea what those plugs are adjustments or what but uh, I have two returns on this one whereas uh, the other one I had one and I need two returns so that'll work out thing first you want this shaft with no oil on it right here oh man where are the glasses go this shaft uh, does not use a keyway and you want all of the oil off of this and you want it clean as possible like super clean um, and dry. So I'm using carb cleaner. Um, I read one guy on the internet said to use carb cleaner instead of instead of using brake cleaner for some reason. I don't know exactly what it was, but I think there was something about the solvents in it or something. Not really sure. It's got to be absolutely clean so that it gets a good bite on the gear. Let me do it one more time. I'll probably do it one more time before I stick it in there too because I'm going to have to handle it. Bad thing is it dilutes my oil a little bit, but <sighs> oh come on. gadgets so I don't accidentally drop them in that cover because then that would mean I have to take the whole cover off and all the front end accessories and all that good stuff that is the last thing I want to do hopefully I have enough room for all this and I want to be very careful not to move this crank all right, 11 foot pounds. That's supposed to be enough tension, I guess I can pull the pin out and then torque it to, I think it was 145 foot pounds. I'm pretty sure the pump is on there well enough now that it wouldn't mess the timing up because I've got a lot of torque on it right now. Okay, I'm gonna put the uh, breather fittings on the tappet cover. For right now, I'm not gonna put a breather on it. Took my T out, and I'm just splicing it together with this. So.
nice. It's like 560 revolutions per mile for 37 inch tires. I like it. If I can get that steering straightened out, man, he's got some big tires. That's a way bigger truck than I wanted. Not complaining. And let's see. Oh. Looks like we got some spray coming out where the um, breather is. Other than that, it looks pretty good. Yep, dry as a bone up here. Kind of expected. So that's all, all blow by, or not blow by, but it's blowing out of those uh, breathers. I'll have to get a breather on that. Get my steering fixed and get the breathers. Huh? Right. Successful mission. For some reason, those tires look gigantic today. Drives nice though. I mean, that's that's the best I could hope for driving. I don't think I can improve on that much. Just got to get the uh, the steering straightened and then air conditioning, a flatbed, tail lights, tail lights first. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it, don't buy it.